Hi everybody. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I don't just make guitars, I make pickups. And I make pickups not like um, lots of companies do, having lots of models and they sit on the shelf and they just go out. I make individual pickups for individual customers, totally hand wound and custom. Now, I had a customer come to me this week who was looking to have a custom SG built. Now he's playing in an ACDC tribute band and he has an early 2000s SG and an SG copy, neither of which were quite doing the job for him. So rather than going blind and try and build him an SG to do what he wanted to do, I really wanted to find out and get a deep dive into what, what it was about these two guitars that wasn't doing the business for him, because otherwise we could just end up replicating the problem as we built the guitars together. As it turned out, there's actually not very much wrong with the guitars. And in fact, I probably taught myself out about 2000 pounds worth of guitar building work because really his problem primarily is the pickups. Both of the guitars had very, very hot pickups in them. And that is not what Angus was using, certainly not in the 1970s. And I don't believe he's using now. In fact, I got a lot of information uh, from the Premier Guitars Rig Rundown, which they did with his tech uh, a tour or two back. And I have to say, it was incredibly informative. And his tech was very, very open about everything that he uses, right down to amp settings, uh, which are a little bit unusual. Now, most of Angus's early guitars, the ones he was using in the 70s before uh, the Back in Black album, where he bought a whole bunch of nice SGs, were either late 60s or very early 70s standard SGs with T-top pickups in them. And in those early days of the T-top pickups, they were actually very low output. In fact, they were pretty low output all the way through, but they were closest in the early days, from what I understand of it, to the original design that Seth Lover had for the pickup, the original PAF, which was exactly 5,000 turns on each bobbin. So what I did was to go back to exactly that design and wind a bridge pickup for the Gibson SG, not the copy. And this is the sound that it gives. And you let me know what you think in the comments, but I think it is actually pretty close. Now, of course, using the rig rundown video, I've set the Helix up to replicate the way that Angus sets his amps up, which I have to say is quite uncommon for Marshall users. He runs pretty much everything on three. Okay, all the tones on three. That's very unusual because most people want to push the treble to push gain into the power end of the circuit to break the amp up. And um, well, that's, uh, that's not what he's doing. He's actually breaking the front of the amp up with the Schaefer uh, radio system. Now he's using a Schaefer box, which is no longer that radio system, he's using a Shaw radio system. But in the early days, uh, from sort of 77 through to the early 80s, he'd have been using that Schaefer radio system and it has a preamp in it, which I'm pretty sure he was cranking up quite hard and has a bit of a mid-range boost to it. So, I set the Helix up. I don't care, I'm gonna get a ton of copyright strikes from ACDC's record label because I'm gonna play some of the riffs uh, probably as best I can play them from memory. I don't make any money on this channel anyway. Who cares? This is what it sounds like. Let me know what you think in the comments.
So there you have it. One very much revitalized early 2000s SG. And it's really interesting for me because the T-top in uh, the world of pickup manufacturers and pickup experts is always seen as kind of a bit of a, a poor relation to the PAF, but I don't see it that way at all. It's got its real character at that bright top end that's created by the Alnico 5 magnet, the low output. It's great for rhythm, it's great for lead, you can stick loads of gain onto one of them. And okay, you are probably gonna to have to boost most amps with a pedal to get as much gain as you could possibly want at low volume circumstances because you know playing in clubs and stuff. But it does have its own very, very distinct character. And it's a character that I really love. In fact, one of the guitar players I played with uh, all the way through the 90s, an American guitarist called Gavin Allred, had two T-tops in a black Les Paul Custom. And to this day, through a Mesa Boogie Mark IV, it's probably one of the best sounds I've ever heard in a rock band. Um, so I, I think this poor relation uh, tag that the T-top gets, I think is a little bit wider than Mark. It's, it's maybe a little bit of pickup snobbery maybe. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. I'll see you all next time, and uh, I hope the customer likes this as much as I do.